So maybe a lot of riding tonight to catch up. Uh, we covered backfire and after fire, I think. Which one burns the slowest? Lean. All right, you're good to go. All right, so let's just talk about float cart. We'll start here. So this is number seven. That's nice. Oh, I see. It's right there. So that's a good one, right? But if you get anywhere near that spot, it screws it all up. Okay, we'll edit that part out so nobody will see that part. Okay, so seven float carburetor. Can't get used to that pencil. I don't like it. <clears throat> All right, what's the function of a float carburetor? What's its purpose in life? Mix fuel and air. Mix fuel and air. All right, right so right ratios. function. That is correct. To deliver a finely atomized, so deliver. Whoa. <laughs> deliver a finely. It does look different right there. I think it's the pencil. <laughs> Adam, well, give me five minutes, right? <laughs> Atomized fuel at the correct, correct air fuel ratio. You say it got better only because it couldn't get much worse. Uh, I mean, it's better than mine. To the engine. Who's talking? Oh, you. Oh. Well, you're one. Yeah, well, he knows it when he sees it. So <laughs> uh, to the um, to the what to the engine. Um, OK, under all operating conditions. Asterisk. So I obviously copied that from something and I'm ready. All right, so what is wrong with that statement? Correct, air fuel ratio to the engine under all operating conditions. Not at idle. What's that? Not at idle. No, no. should do. That you'll need to adjust. Different, different altitudes? Should work at all altitudes. When it's upside down? When it's upside uh. down. Carburetors don't work upside down. No. They have limitations to That's their. That's why the Spitfire suffered so much. No, no. No. All right, so. Asterisk. This is done by. So this is done by. Dot dot dot. A measuring. Measuring how much air is entering the engine. Measuring how much air is entering the engine. How does it do that? There you go. You're going to notice that every single fuel system we talk about has to have a way to measure how much air is entering the engine except for one. That's the continental fuel injection system. It's completely stupid to how much air is going in. It's a very unique system. I actually really like it. Is that why it's so hard to start? Or? No, it's just fuel injected. Uh, measuring the correct amount, so measure how much air, then measuring, or I could say adding the correct amount of fuel, so measuring the correct, correct amount of, amount of fuel for good combustion, measuring the correct amount of fuel for good, not perfect, combustion for the measured air how does it do that okay in conjunction with the metering jet but the metering jet is just there and it's always there so at some times the carburetor is going to need more fuel sometimes it needs less fuel so how does it do that 
the difference in your level of the float? No, the float level should be constant at all time. Mixture control. Mixture control, I don't, some people say don't even use it. No, so auto valve is something I set as a pilot, but the carburetor has to give it the correct amount of fuel. Metering jet? I said the metering jet only really has, metering jet is for wide open throttle. Anything less than that, it's too big. So would it still be the Venturi then? Kind of is the Venturi at that point. So how does the Venturi do that? It tells you how much air, you know how much air, then you know how much fuel. Kind of. I mean, is it really measuring air? No. Suction. no. no. Suction. 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 So the more air that flows through, the greater the suction. And so, all right, so we get more. Just make sure you understand that. But of course, it is in conjunction with the main metering jet and the float level. If the float level is too high, the carburetor is going to run. Rich. Too rich, too low, it's going to run. Mm -hmm. It's just going to be right at the right spot. If your main metering jet is too big, it's rich. rich. If it's too small, it's Lean. there you go. Uh, let's see. And then delivering the mixture. So then done by delivering, delivering and mixing, and mixing the fuel. into the air, into the air, moving in, in the induction system, air moving in the induction system. What do I mean by induction system? That's, to me, that's everything from the inlet of the cowling, past the fuel filter, or air filter, to the plenum chamber, to the carburetor, to the intake plenum, uh, or manifold, to the pipes, to the cylinders. So that's the system. All right. There are different types of carburetors. What was that? Was one. Should be an I there. There we go. There was an I. Okay, I. So two I's. I, I, types of carbs. We can do this. Types of carbs. Uh, we can define them by airflow. By airflow type. So there is the a downdraft. Meaning? Down. Comes in the carburetor, goes down into the intake manifold, down in the engine. Uh, B, that would be then. Up. Yes. Up. Oh, yep. Now, one of the bad things about an updraft carburetor is that, well, if you take, I always forget. You guys are too freaking young for half this stuff. Uh, so you know. Okay. In the old timey days, when we had a carburetor. And you get in, you pump the accelerator a couple times, which is really fun because as fuel injection came along, people still did that. They would get in their car and pump the fuel injection. And of course, it didn't do anything but just open the butterfly valves. And you know, it's like, okay, well, it makes you feel happy. But back then, there was accelerator pumps that would force fuel and spray it down into the, the uh, intake manifold, which primed it. And that's how you'd start it. In fact, my boat still has one of those on it. So... You know, I get in there and I give it a couple of these, and kids are like, "What are you doing? Don't worry about it." You know, and it starts. So, <clears throat> um, the fuel went this way. Now, on our carburetors that we use, not the Stromberg and not the smallest of the Marvels, but all the rest of them, um, my 150 had it, um, and on up, it does still have an accelerating pump. We talked about that yesterday. So I said, don't open the butterfly valve when you're looking at it because it'll square up about that high. <clears throat> so you can use it for priming. Now, uh, if you guys would have saw me starting the engine out there today, good job. Um, when I started it, I gave the throttle a bunch of this stuff as I was cranking it because I assumed there was air in the system wasn't working. And then you heard a bang because I actually went through and went through the cylinders and started filling up the exhaust. And then when I put it on the mag that I shouldn't have had it on trying to do something, it did spark or... Anyway, we got a spark and a light off. So, um, but I guess my point here is, 
that when you use the accelerator pump, you have to be careful on an air crane. It does spray up and then right back down. And right so you get a hot exhaust. Uh, no, the exhaust should be off to the side. Uh, but it puddles up, and if you get a backfire, oh. it will light off the intake system on fire. <clears throat> now, if you do get an intake system fire, you're supposed to continue cranking, right. and the fire should suck up it. Yep. <coughs> All right, downdraft, updraft, and side draft. Side draft. Uh, a fair amount of like, some like homing stuff, side drafts where you have the sump and you have your carburetor bolts to the bottom, that sump has it on the back. And so it just goes to the back. Uh, let me think. Technically, the RSA fuel injection for light Cummings would be a side draft. Is there <coughs> one on the top of the cabinets in there? Is there one of those side drafts? One yeah, one? yeah. Okay. I think. HA6, I think it is, I forget. By operation. So we're talking about just carburetors. We can also further define it by there's a float type. The float type, which is what you have because it has a float in it, or it could be a pressure carb. Which incidentally does have a tiny little float in it, but it does something else. <coughs> totally different function. So a float carburetor has a float in it. A float carburetor can be used uh, on low wing, which still means that you have to have some sort of low pressure fuel pump to pump it in. But a pressure carbs, they have much higher pressures. We'll talk about those in a week or two. All right, so we have all those different types. So we'll talk about carbs. I didn't go too far there, did I? All right. I think it's the pencil actually does write a little nicer. I think it's just the the fine. Yeah, yeah, that's the word. <clears throat> All right, let's talk about the main metering system. <clears throat> main metering system. All right. Parts in the main metering system. Maybe looking at my notes where I'm headed with this, I could have called it more of the uh, off idle system, if you will. Because the next thing I have on here is Venturi, and that's really not part of the main metering system, but yet it is. All right, Venturi. Did you guys get a whole lot of Venturi talk with Phil? Yes. Uh, yeah. Dynamics. And then, let me see. So that would have been... Bernoulli. Bernoulli. Yeah, yeah, but then not all of... The, some of you, this is your first semester, but you had a whole lot of Bernoulli talking about turbines, right? Yeah. Okay, so I don't have to go into that. Um, and then for those of you in your second semester, you should have gotten a whole bunch, even more from Phil in aerodynamics, yes? Yeah? What? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> So the Ventur I could probably just skip all this and go to the next thing, but we'll, we'll do it. Creates the low pressure, the low pressure, needed to draw fuel from the discharge nozzle. Creates the low pressure needed to draw fuel from the discharge nozzle. Hey, you know what I just thought about? <clears throat> oh, I never heard this before. I can write in cursive. That would be a lot faster. Uh, do it. Try it. Do it. Uh, no. <laughs> no. Operates on, <laughs> I didn't do a proper B, but B-E-R-N-O-U-L-L-I. Bernoulli's. <laughs> no? No. no. <laughs> Pretty good. Pretty good? Okay. All right. Operates. on Bernoulli's. Bernoulli's principle. Principle. Huh? It's correctly. Well, it should be. I'm just copying off my list in front of me. Uh -oh. <laughs> I literally could just scan this and put it up there and have a seat. <laughs> I know. Just like, write that. Let me know when you're done.
then I'll explain. I'll explain. If you have any questions, I'll be in my office on my couch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> In fact, I could. I could just remote from in there and just kind of, next page, next page. And I just hear Mike, no! <laughs> <laughs> Where is that All right, so you. <laughs> is that B or C? As velocity increases, what happens to pressure? It decreases. Pressure decreases. Okay, that is correct. So let's see, the more air that flows, the greater the suction. Not, as you can tell, I'm not actually being like all scientific, but the, the more air that flows, the greater the suction. The greater the suction. And more <clears throat> fuel is drawn out. Not that more, and, yeah, and more fuel is drawn out of discharge nozzle of Talking a little bit about this whole idea of, of suction, we talk in terms of manifold pressure. So an aircraft that has a constant speed propeller will have a manifold pressure gauge. An aircraft that has a fixed pitch propeller is very unlikely to have a manifold pressure gauge. You strictly go off RPM. But if you have a constant speed prop, you adjust, you set your RPM where you want it, and the throttle adjusts the manifold pressure. So we go back to engine class. We had the Planck formula, which was developing horsepower, yes. which consisted of P was power, power. Pressure. No. Pressure. Uh, pressure. pressure, L. Length of stroke, Length of stroke. Mm -hmm. A, area of piston, yeah. and was number of cylinders. Cylinder. No, that was K. 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 Oh, K was number of cylinders. Number of power, P, O, A, and. Yeah. Yeah, number of strokes. Oh, so number of strokes. No, number of no, strokes. Number of oh. No. Number, no. RPM. RPM. It's RPM. Uh, yeah. RPM. Okay, so we're looking at the P and the RPM and the N. Number of number of power pulses. Oh right. Okay. So that's your function of horsepower from a pilot's perspective. I can control the pressure in the cylinders or the RPM. And it's a combination of I mean there's there's a bunch of right answers. You know, it's A, B, C, and D. It's like do you want uh, 28 inches and 24 RPM, you want 24 inches of manifold and this RPM. So it all kind of almost is the same thing. You get to choose. Um, just as a, by the way, most pilots talk about flying squared, which would be um, the numbers match. And it's just coincidence. And so you would fly um, 24 inches of, of manifold at 2400 RPM or something like that. So like I fly 20, 20 squared, 20 inches and 2000 RPM, you know, a lot of the times. So it's just, it's a way to remember it, it's easy. But so anyway, but you have to get used to the idea of this manifold pressure knowing what's going on. So it's really just a gauge that's connected in the manifold, which is past the throttle valve, past the butterfly. So it's what that is. So when you sit in the airplane and it's off and you look at the manifold pressure gauge, it really should be saying atmospheric. about atmospheric pressure because it's off and that's what it is. And then when you start it up and you idle, manifold pressure, suction's going to go up, so manifold pressure goes way down. Way down. It's really low. Just keep going. <laughs>
really low. As I increase the throttle, manifold pressure is going to increase. So let's just say when I got in the aircraft to start it up, I noticed that it was 30 inches. I start it up, and when I go wide open throttle, about what should I see? Assuming that it is not a turbocharged, it's a normally aspirated aircraft. Yeah, pressure to go up. 29. 29. Mm -hmm. It's going to be about one inch less. inch less. Why the inch less? Why can't we get the full 30? Because the restrictions. It's not perfect. Restrictions. What restrictions do we have? You're right, there is a filter. Um, however, the intake plenum and air filter are usually overcompensated for because the propeller acts like a little bit of a turbocharger. And, and your forward velocity overcomes that. So I think it's something that I've read somewhere like 6% increase. Is it 90 yeah. degree Not necessarily, no. Like my manifold pressure is taken right after the carburetor, it's straight in. So there's a 90 degree bend, then the carburetor, then the manifold pressure is right there. What's in the carburetor? Venturi is a restriction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it or not, that's a restriction. So we got a restriction plus the throttle plate, which can add a little bit of restriction. So, so we're not going to get 30. We're going to get about an inch less at wide open throttle. It will go up a little bit with forward velocity just because of the force of the, pro the propeller and the air coming in to uh, forcing it in. So, all right. Just want to make sure, because we're talking a lot about manifold pressure. I want to make sure you force. We don't really talk much about air metering force in carburetors, but get used to this idea because, boy, when we get into pressure carbs, air metering force, fuel metering force. Air metering, it's all, we're going to live and die by these. Also, fuel injection. Um, so it's going to become a huge deal. But for a carburetor, we can define it as the force of the air through the venturi. The force of the air through the Venturi. All right, so the Venturi, why it's four, I don't know. The Venturi will restrict and limit the air into the engine. So what is the ultimate item that restricts airflow to the engine? Venturi. It is the Venturi. But it's also the brain, so you have to have it. Yeah. And just like us, the brain is the limiting factor. <laughs> There's so many things that I would do, but my brain says, you no. don't, you probably know. So, not always. You can have alcohol and shut it up. <laughs> I'm not advocating alcohol, so don't. Wait, you drink? No, I've, I've seen it on TV. <laughs> I was going to write something. I don't know what I was going to Probably not the that. Yes. The alcohol. The alcohol. Yes. The alcohol. It just stops at last. All right, therefore. I was going to write therefore. So. Therefore. All right. Therefore, the Venturi. The Venturi size is important. Size is important. I've heard that before, and that's they're talking about Venturis. Um, size I don't have any. Is very important. Important. One or I, if it is too large. Right, because you're thinking, well, shoot, if the Venturi is a restricting thing, make it bigger right. so that it doesn't <coughs> matter. Well, what if it's too large? It doesn't make enough pressure, no suction. Yep, no suction. It no doesn't suction. work. Because, right? you know, if it's this big, it's like, well, no. So if it's too large, um, it is ineffective. It is ineffective. Ineffective at creating... Suction. Uh, the Marvel Shevlers actually have a double venturi. They have a primary and a secondary venturi. 
Um, if it is too small, it will restrict airflow too much. It will restrict airflow and restrict power. So the Venturi that has been selected is an important size. All right, so that's the Venturi. Main discharge nozzle. That is simply where the fuel is, where fuel, or where uh, fuel is drawn out. Where fuel is drawn out. into the air that is entering the engine. And the fuel level should be just below the discharge nozzle, the holes in the discharge nozzle. What if the float level is too low? Then the fuel level is going to be low in the discharge nozzle and it takes more suction to raise it out and so that's the lean. Uh, float chamber, I'll move right along. Dang it, now I want to float. A root beer float. Mm -hmm. That sound good. Acts as a reservoir for fuel to be used. Reservoir for fuel to be used. Uh, it also controls the level of fuel at the discharge nozzle. We just talked about that. Controls the level uh, of fuel at the discharge nozzle at discharge nozzle. There we go. Obviously, without the use of a float and the proper float level, the fuel would just go into the bowl, do the main metering jet up, and just flow on the floor. So you'd have to like start cranking the engine, then turn the fuel on and hope that it worked, which it wouldn't. Uh, fuel enters the float chamber. Fuel enters the float chamber. Float chamber from fuel supply. Oops. From the fuel supply. It could be a gravity feed system. It is about three to five PSI. Um, you heard the term, term head pressure? Yeah. That's the, the space to the top of the discharge nozzle that the fuel has to uh, travel? Technically, head pressure is no, just a gravity it's feed system. It's whatever the pressure is due to the gravity feed. Okay. That's what you have when you have s bad sinuses. Yeah. 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 Pressure system. So if you have a low wing, pressure system in a low wing is, you know, I've got, I think this is a little bit high, but I'll go with it since I don't, 5 to 20. Eh, it's, I don't think it's much more than 5, but I wrote it down for a reason, 5 to 20. So if you have a low wing airplane, Gravity feed system is out of the question because the low wing is here and the carburetor is about right here. Or, 
Well, then it would be, <laughs> then it would look like this. <laughs> so you have to have two fuel pumps. You're always going to see two fuel pumps in any time you have fuel pump systems. So you have one in the tank, which is a boost pump, and that is a centrifugal pump, not a constant displacement pump. Mm -hmm. All right, so we understand the difference in constant displacement and not. So if it's a not constant displacement pump, or um, what did I just say? Um, centrifugal, centrifugal type, it's just got an impeller that's going to spin. Yeah. And if you block off the end, well, it's like a box fan for, you know, a house or something. You know, if I, you know what I'm talking about? The little fan still on the floor? Mm -hmm. That's the same thing, right? If I put a bunch of cardboard on one end of it, the fan still goes, it doesn't burn up. It's like, hey, whatever. All right? Because it's not constant displacement. If it was constant displacement, it would suck all the cardboard in and spit it out the other side. <laughs> so, all right. So you can have that in, in the fuel tank that pressure feeds to the engine driven pump. All right, so why do we have that one there and then an engine driven? It does help uh, pull air out of the fuel, kind of bubbles it. Primarily, in case the engine driven pump fails, you don't lose the whole aircraft, right? You can run it off the boost pump. So, well, whatever, that one quit, turn the boost pump on, it's electrical. Engine driven pump is not electrical, it's driven by the engine. All right, so also you turn on the boost pump, which feeds fuel to the engine driven pump. And then when you start the engine and the engine's running, then that has pump, and then you can turn off the boost pump if you want. Usually the boost pump is on for takeoff and landing because you yeah, don't have safety. a lot of time. Yeah, you take off and it's like, oh, look, the engine driven pump just failed. What should I, I you know, it's, you already have it running. Uh, let's see. Here we go. This uh, 520 PSI? Yes. Three, four. All right, we're looking good here. Four. I guess we're talking about carburetors, but just 5 to 20 PSI just seems so low to me. Seems for too high for a, for a for carburetor. Just a flow carburetor. Yeah. All right, fuel metering force. I full on disagree with this. I mean, it's true, but I don't know why they did it. It is the difference, difference in air pressure from the float bowl to the Venturi. So fuel metering force is not fuel, it's not a fuel force, it's not a fuel pressure. It almost has nothing to do with fuel. It is air pressure between the float chamber and the venturi. Mm -hmm. If they're equal, what happens? No fuel, no fuel. Well, that's called off, right? <laughs> so if they're, yeah, no fuel. And the greater the, dis the difference, the more fuel will flow. If you can change the difference in either one of them, you'll slow fuel down, which is the back suction type of mixture control that we talked about. If you add a little bit of suction to the float chamber, it equalizes a little bit, so you're going to get more, less fuel flowing out of the discharge nozzle. Um, you could also look at it this way, um, the force, force required. Required to lift the fuel, to lift the fuel from its normal level, fuel from its normal level to the discharge point. Point number five, main air bleed. All right, what's the main air bleed all about? We talked about this. What's that? All right, I'll take that. 
Yeah, because it does the emulsify the, the air. The fuel. <laughs> it does. It emulsifies the air. The fuel. <laughs> okay. The air emulsifies itself. Helps break surface tension. Tension of liquid fuel. Uh, it also helps lift it up to the discharge point. Helps lift fuel to discharge point. Uh, helps provide a more uniform mixture of fuel and air. Uniform mixture of fuel and air. Also creates more surface area of the fuel. Creates more surface area. Area of fuel. Fuel for faster evaporation. All right, so I got a couple little things here. Let me see. Question. And I guess we'll make this the policy here. What happens if the air bleed is blocked? And I got this out of a book. This isn't my wording. I gave you mine already, but is it a Q and A? What's the answer then? I haven't gotten it right. Good answer. It's clogged. All right. It said, I copy this word for word. I don't remember where. More suction is acting on the discharge nozzle. I don't know why more suction is acting. Um, their words, not mine. Nozzle. Uh, so more fuel. So more fuel will be drawn out. Which, now part of me goes, oh, what, what happened to the surface tension and you know trouble getting out but the next part does make sense um, more fuel will be drawn out in larger this is true larger less precise less precise globules globules little balls of fuel, globules, with less air. And it goes on to say, this would be a rich mixture. Uh, what if the air bleed is made larger? Or what if it's what if air bleed will say oops, is too big? Answer. Daily double. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be the opposite, obviously. Too much air um, will enter. Causing a lean mixture. Now, be careful. It's yes, that's true. 
but it's not that you're increasing this, you know, if it's 12 to one, you're not increasing that 12 by a whole lot. What you're doing is you're removing the fuel. So and out of the discharge nozzle, instead of the proper one of fuel, that number starts to drop. It's like, well, it's, you know, 75% fuel and 25% air. That screws it all up. So it's going to be lean because you're not getting enough fuel out, not so much because you added so much air that it changed everything. All right. We good? Can I move over? All right. Covering some ground because you already know this stuff. Probably take a nap right now. Not looking at you. <laughs> I, she is, I know. Yeah, she has that monster. That's probably a dangerous thing. <laughs> I've never had an energy drink in my life. It's it's serious. It's scary. Scary. It's scary. It's scary. Oscar's never done anything exciting in his life. <laughs> You're not supposed to take it with your medication. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see, what is the main metering jet? A calibrated orifice means a hole of an exact size that meters fuel, that meters fuel accurately. Based on the pressure differential between float bowl and venturi, meters accurately based on the pressure differential between fuel bowl and venturi. <laughs> that is an important point, although this is something that's thrown out there. It's, we're, you're going to have to, or we are, we're gonna talk a lot about, I guess, fluid dynamics is the, is the proper term about how things flow through an orifice. And understand that when you have a given size orifice, which you have a hose and you have a restriction, now that's an orifice, right? If you had a little trickle going down that hose through that little orifice, would the trickle care? The answer is no. It would just go through the orifice like it was no big deal, right? It, it would be like if you hooked up a garden hose that's this big around to your house, it's like, well, you you would get no pressure because there's no restriction. I guess that's a whole other point. Like but a venturi that's too big. Like a venturi that's too big. It doesn't care. It's like whatever. Um, and so this point is that that venturi is the right size because of the pressure being what it is. If you were to increase the pressure differential, then it would force more through that orifice. So the orifice, it's the right size for that pressure. If you increase the pressure, it's going to be the wrong size orifice. You got to bring it down a lot more because you have a bunch of pressure going through it, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> She's looking at me. She give me stink eye. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah, she made someone quit today. I heard she yeah. made him cry too. He did. He came in. He was out there all Sunday waiting for somebody to open up. <laughs> you said to be here with the cow suit. <laughs> <laughs> all right, float mechanism. We are talking toilet bowl technology here. Ooh. Yeah, you ever hope? Probably he's never done oh, it. Yeah. 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 He just clogs it up and calls his mom. <laughs> <laughs> mom, the toilet's clogged again. He doesn't. What do you say? I just don't use the toilet. Just go outside. Yeah. His, his, what's, what's the homer bucket? Is that it? Oh, my God. He's got a Homer bucket. <laughs> oh, man. I tell you the grossest. Oh, no. Oh, no.